you know, you, 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 cl- you play with you play with and collect toys. There's a little bit more of a dorky side to it when you say that. Welcome back to another Squadcast. But today I'm with someone that I've talked about like 20 times on the show when I talk about toys and games. Ed's Retro Geek Out. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> Ed, Ed where, where are you from? Before everyone asks, goes, what's his accent? Yeah, uh, I I'm from Belgium, so it's somewhere in Europe, and uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, I've been over to the Americas yeah. and, and stuff like that, but it's I'm I'm a Belgian guy. I yep. live in Belgium. I sound a bit American, not too much, but uh, a lot of people have been asking me that lately. So yeah. Yeah. it comes out in certain words you say. But the reason the reason I wanted Ed on the show, Ed's retro geek out on the show today, is because you're a huge video game guy, but you're also a huge toy guy. And I would say it feels like more lately, like your channel's more of a toy channel. And um, which brings us to the topic that is, I think, pretty pretty relevant right now in the game hunting world is that a lot of the game hunting channels or even just game hunting people we know have kind of turned to toy hunting or letting toys become a huge part of their channel and this was actually your idea to talk about this so i kind of want to let you kick it off and kind of your thoughts on why it seems like toys is becoming so prominent in the retro world which was normally kind of considered the retro world was kind of like a video game thing yeah totally i mean i i started out just doing the video game collecting the retro gaming and um obviously when you have nostalgia for the video games yeah you have nostalgia for all the pop culture that was out there because you have the Batman games, you have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, that stuff usually tied in with toys that you also owned as a kid back in the day. And then when you're out flea market hunting or garage sailing, that's the things you kind of look for yeah. when you're hunting for video games because you know, oh, they have turtle toys. They must have had, you know, like a Game Boy or an NES back in the day as well. It's, it's a good indicator. And, you know, you're kind of iffy on, do I want to pick up all the toys already, too? Or is that something, you know, I mean, who plays with toys, right? Come on, we can play with video games, but who plays with toys? It's funny how, like, as, like, retro collectors, it's like, I'm much more confident saying to someone that I collect video games than I am saying I collect toys. It's almost like a, a little, and it's not, obviously, to us, we don't care, but it's almost like a little bit more like, toys? You know, you you, you, cl- you play with you play with and collect toys. There's a little bit more of a dorky side to it when you say that. There seems to be like a hidden barrier between collecting uh, toys compared to video games. Yeah, it's interesting Absolutely. too because what do you think? Or I mean, even us in general, like toy uh, video game collecting is has gotten got so popular and became such a thing in the retro world in what 2000. Or what? When do you think that got really popular? 2013 or so? Or 2013? 2013, 2014. It took about two years later before it really hit in Europe or, or mainland Europe. I, I think UK was a bit earlier with that as well. Got it. Um, but yeah, you know, the American channels blew up then. Um, yeah. Prices started soaring. And yeah. um, I went from being pretty much the only guy at flea markets looking for that stuff to having so much competition and actual resellers only selling retro games popping up now i i do you think the reason that toys are kind of popping up and i'll admit we're like kind of one of the ones that i say is fully kind of embraced toys more in the last year and a half than we ever thought we would have uh we don't collect near as many we i'd say toys probably take up 60 percent of our pickups now and it used to be games were a hundred percent you know But I think for us, it's like that nostalgic bubble of being excited over games. Not that it peaked, but maybe it's like once you see everything and you've seen everything, looking for video games, you watch, you're watching the channels, you're watching the things, you're going to conventions, pretty much looking at games, 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 to where I feel like the excitement, obviously I still collect them, but the excitement of seeing like those expensive games has kind of like, kind of dwindled out. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, was it just, did we jump into toys? Do you think the community is kind of jumping into, into toys more because that's like the next thing, the next the next level of geeky nostalgia that we kind of have? 
Well, I think there's a lot of different factors um, converging to this point where toy collecting has become more apparent to video game collectors. But um, for me, it seems like um, like it has become more trendy as as video game collecting got to be around 2014. Um, I, I think there's also just uh, lots of people that have been collecting video games for the past 10 years. And to be honest, some of them uh, have started doing more of purging their collections and, you know, more focusing on this is what I'm going to be collecting, but you still want to go out to the flea market and find stuff. And what do you do when finds are low? You start picking up other stuff. You know, there's people picking up anything pop culture related to Batman, you know, from the soundtracks to the toys to any type of merchandise out there. And like a natural progression or like an obvious step is just to go for the toys you had as a kid because they're from the same era yeah. as when you were, were playing with those video games so it has that same kind of connection to that that happy feeling that 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 finding it apart from that it's also just the collecting habit or the collecting aspect of the hunting itself it's the thrill of the hunt when you find a really cool toy because the toys are actually also very valuable yeah do you think that toys, and I mean, obviously this might be a subjective question, but do you think toys hold as much of a nostalgic, nostalgic high praise as video games do? And what I mean by that is like video games, to me personally, I have more nostalgia for them. I don't know if that's like the common thread among people, why video games kind of like became the hot thing before toys, or at least in this kind of like this, this, this genre of our age. Um, or do you think that's just subjective if you played with toys more than video games as a kid or or video games because you probably as a kid put more hours into actually playing a video game than actually physically playing with toys? I guess that totally makes sense. If if you were more of, of, of a, if, if you spent more time playing the video games, then you're going to be more connected to that. If you played with the toys a lot, you're probably going to be drawn to that and not just the toy, but the actual packaging it came in. It's the same thing with, you know, NES box art or just the stuff that was on the back of the boxes back in the day. Yeah. Um, all of that kind of throws, when you, when you throw all of that together, it's it's a really huge nostalgic feeling that you can get out there, you know? Yeah, true. Um, a question, kind of my, uh, my biggest question uh, for you, and this is a funny one for collectors because we're all kind of guilty as collectors, whatever it is we're collecting, to kind of collect and then let things uh, sit around. But video games, for me, feels like as adults, for us that grew up, you know, collecting toys, collecting video games, or just playing with them in general, video games now that we collect them both, I collect both these things, you collect both these things, a bunch of people collect both of them. I definitely use or play with my video games more than I do my toys. I don't necessarily know many adults, or maybe you do, maybe even you do, that actually go home with video games, we'll go home and play them, that's just a thing. I don't know if I could see little Ed's retro geek out and his Ninja Turtle boxers playing with toys all night. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, not, not even judging. I just don't know, do you know what people do? You're, you know more toy people than I do. I, I know of people that, you know, in, in the Lego community, they'll be, you know, building stuff. And okay, I think yeah, that's a really different. big part of um, toy collecting is actually just knowing what you have yeah. and trying to preserve that and making it as complete as possible. Got it. So you don't really play with your toys, or at least I don't know of many people that actually still do play with them. Yeah. But you display them and you make like cool dioramas or you work in your toy room um, and, and just spend a ton of time in there rearranging. How you, it's, it's the same thing with a gaming collection. You never stop rearranging that. I'm only gonna set all that stuff up. Yeah. Um, obviously it is way easier to get your games in order toys they're like finicky like you can't place them like the dinosaurs they, they fall down and yeah it's a struggle 
Yeah, it's a story. It takes up a lot more space. All the toys, definitely. Yeah, because it's games you can just like shove them in places, and they still look decent. Like when you kind of shove them next to each other and make this fit in this corner, it's like, oh, it kind of looks decent. It has an end label well, for the most part. They have end labels, but yeah, toys, man. It's just like you kind of put them somewhere, and you're like, well, I hope they don't fall when I shut the door. Totally, totally. Yeah. I, I think there's there's like a big difference in in game collecting and. Um, toy collecting just because of it but then again there's also like a huge market for adult toy collectors yeah yep so i mean you have all of these companies like super seven like neca mesco toys hot toys uh the list goes on there's like 40 of these companies putting out putting out high-end toys for like ridiculous prices sometimes and people buy them yep People buy them just to have them. They they put them in a in a display in a glass display case. Look at it, and then eight months later, go like maybe I don't need this one. Yeah, and then they'll you know flip it or or trade it for something else. Yeah, it's fun to watch like nostalgic things, kind of like you know from our genre. Our our it, how old are you? I'm thirty one. Okay, and I'm thirty five, so we're pretty much same same time frame. Uh, but it's weird to watch nostalgic things kind of like go through the gamut of getting popular and not. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know there's a huge world. What is like the 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 like the the top things that people kind of collect from our past? I know video games, toys, comics. Uh, I know VHS is kind of becoming a thing. I'm seeing more and more people jump into, myself included. I don't know if there's like a hierarchy system of like what the most you know, desired things from our past that people jump back into. Do you know from talking to like groups and people or whatnot? I, I could never get into comics. I tried, just wasn't my thing. To me, now it seems like toys just because most people already have all the games they want and it's really difficult to find them out in the wild. So when you do buy a new game you need, you're probably going to find it over at a convention and pray and like play and like pay uh yeah. like a huge amount for it or have to trade it in yeah so it seems like more people are heading towards finished toys yeah just because they're still out there yeah yeah it, is the is the complete in box or on card as you call it in the toy world is that as important to toy collecting as in box cib is to video game collecting or do you think people care less they care more do you kind of know in the world of toy collecting if that's a big as important? There, there's definitely high end collectors out there that will only go for mint and box. That yeah. will even go for the degraded ones only. And then there's people that are like, you know, I, I don't want them on card. I just want them loose and complete, or I don't yeah. care if they're not complete if they don't have their weapons. I just want the thrill of finding them again, and I'll yeah. see and piece them together as as I move along with this collection. Yeah. So, what it's you- the same with, with with retro game collectors. You know, yeah. some people don't really need that box, or they they don't care that the labels ripped as long as they can play it. Yeah. What there's, do you, there's quite some what, similarities. What do you have more of personally? I know you have a ton. If you haven't seen any of his uh, game room stuff, or you're new to his channel, you got to check it out. He does some cool stuff. His you have an awesome, awesome collection of toys and video games. Uh, great setup. Great look. Uh, I always for toys I always look at like you and Laura Legends you guys are kind of like the people I look for toys a little bit of retro Rick but I like to give him a hard time in life so I don't like to support him <laughs> he's a good friend I always text him bro and I'm giving I'm, poor guy he's like have you ever made a serious comment to me I'm like I don't think I ever will bro I'm sorry but I love the guy but what do you have more of, of personally do you have more toys or more video games uh, I definitely used to have a lot more video games but uh i think toys are, are definitely uh, taking over. making yeah taking over i think i have about four thousand video games and i think now i'm at like something like three thousand wow items wow but it does vary you know from like the smallest transformers to yeah but i guess switch game is also like as big as a transformer True. sometimes so i'm also playing a clip of us going to find toys if everyone's like why are you playing this clip but yeah so 
Um, yeah, now, but you picked up toys early on in in the NES Pursuit, with, yeah. you know, like the Bucky O'Hare figure, and that was like, oh, I remember seeing that episode and finding one at a thrift store like two weeks later and being like, oh, they found this on the NES Pursuit. You know what? It's <laughs> funny you say that, and thank you. Uh, Ricky kind of, I think, was kind of, and obviously the Toy Chasers, a few others, and, you know, there is others, but Ricky definitely was like, ahead of the game with certain things as far as collecting them but even to the point where i didn't find them important at all so i almost wouldn't even put a lot of it on camera or i wouldn't even make a big deal about it when he did get it like ricky would buy toys in the early days and he would even buy signs like really cool light up signs and i watch back on some of the episodes and i'm like oh my gosh i didn't even like mention it because i didn't think in the video at the time i didn't think people really cared about toys i didn't really think it'd be a thing but I always thought that, that, like, looking back, I'm like, man, Ricky was kind of, like, ahead of it, like, really into toys and signs and stuff before they kind of became a little more popularized. Yeah, definitely. I, I Like, that was stuff I was looking for That's in Toy mind. Chasers, in your channel, uh, seeing what, what are these guys finding. And obviously, Bucky O'Hare tied in with the video game, so yeah. it... It felt great, probably, to add that into the show and be like, "Did we, did we, did we yeah. pass it through? Did any everybody accept this being in there?" Yeah. Um, but yeah, there there has been like there's been a lot of, a lot of channels out there that I've noticed uh, got bigger by doing the game hunting, and yeah. then when they started like adding toys in there, people stopped watching. It's got it. so got weird, it. and they have to like rebuild their audience uh, or separate the videos. Okay, this is a game hunting video. This is a toy hunting video. Yeah. You see it with toy chasers as well. Those have a little less views. Yeah, which which is weird because I mean it's 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 just as great. Um, one thing that has definitely kept me back um, toy hunting was in 2012 the the TV show Toy Hunter aired on like holiday channel or, or whatever it was. And for the most part, what it did was it, it showed like um, Jordan Hambro going out, finding toys, buying them and selling them again. But, but most of those finds were like placed by uh, the network. Like, okay, yeah. we need really good finds in here. So we're gonna like set it up for you yeah. and everything. Yep. Which ended up every episode was like, oh, here's like a $400 toy. Here's like Go a five hundred dollar toy. Yeah. Here's like something you'll never get. So to me, that was kind of like scary. Like, oh my god, everything's so darn expensive. Yeah. And I think that that's what lots of people were like. I don't know if I want to get into that because yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel yeah. Um, and a question I have for you, one of the bigger questions, is if you had to pick one, you had to get rid of every toy you've ever collected tomorrow or you have to get rid of every video game you've ever collected tomorrow which would you pick to get rid of uh look at i've never seen you so concerned <laughs> probably go for toys because I, I think i can find them more easily and, and cheap now still Got some it. of them some of them probably not but yeah I don't know what kind of magic you're gonna have to use to, to make to make, to make, make that, that happen, decision. Yeah. <laughs> what what are you most into as far as toys go? What's like uh, you know for for well, I guess here's the thing for video games we all know what the grails are at this point, right? We've all beat it to its death at this point. We've all heard it a thousand times. We've all done videos on the little Samsons, the box, this and that. We know what in toys is like the what is the little Samson equivalent? Even though Little Samson isn't worth the most, it's just kind of like the known game that everybody wants. You know what I mean? What is like in the toy world? What is the the grail? Like, oh, you got you got that. You know. So um, before I answered that, Little Samson, the PAL version, yeah, is also like sought after, but it's only like 150 euros, which is tops 200 dollars over here. Wow, it's the same freaking game. Yeah, we have our own version of Little Samson, which is called. Mr. Gimmick, yep. a Ooh, very, a uh, yeah, very great game. Also very sought after and very uncommon, unfortunately. Yeah, he looks like a little like bubble bobble character. Yeah, yeah, or like kind of Kirby-ish. It's yeah, yeah. like Euph Euphoria, yeah. uh, which is also a PAL exclusive oh, yeah, Euphoria, one. Euphoria, yeah, yeah, not not as expensive. Um, so what is it? What would be the, the Grail out there in toys? In toys, there's a lot. 
What's like the one? Come on, give me one. What's like the one? If I found Eternia. it, everyone. Eternia. Which one? The there, there's like a couple play sets that came uh, in 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 certain toy lines. You have the Eternia play set uh for masters of the universe Got it. which will run you loose around a thousand probably um the thunder cat slayer play set is also one of those that that will go for like 800 bucks loose got it um and then you have certain toys like master of the universe scare glow the usa edition is is like 280 dollars loose wow. if you find wow. that one on card it's pretty expensive pretty hefty I, I would have to say for Master of the Universe, um, this is a European release, but there was a duo pack with Skeletor and He-Man featuring a uh, cassette tape uh, named Stardust or okay. like the magic of the Stardust. Okay. That card goes for around $1,500. Holy cow. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a little out of what I would like to pay. <laughs> Yeah, and then I, I guess turtles. Um, the turtle grails are used to be scratch was like a really popular uh, figure everybody wanted to get. It was a late release for the Brigbacks. Yeah. Um, that 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 line kind of ended in 1993, and then they started doing just more variations on turtles. Got it. Uh, so that is a holy grail, but. It seems now like the, the most priciest ones are the undercover turtles, which came really? with like their own little cloth thing. So not undercover Donnie, but they re-released. Well, it's not a re-release. They released the four turtles as undercover turtles, and those on card can go up to two thousand two hundred dollars easily. I mean, I guess I, I'm reacting the way you know people are when they don't know video games go for that much. They go, "What? Come on, that's silly." You know what I mean? But that's how people respond when I tell them about video games that are worth that much money. And again, me kind of being newer into really diving into toys, that to me is like, I'm like that person who's like, what? That's too much money for a toy, you know? Yeah, but I think it's also just, we've been inside of the retro game bubble for so long. Yeah. So it's kind of a culture shock yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. that we go through when we start noticing uh, the toy community and yeah how expensive the toy community is because like master of the universe and Teenage Mutant ninja turtles are probably my favorite toy lines out there but there are so many smaller ones which people have been collecting for the past 20 years and prices have gone up so much that it's like i don't even want to get into that toy line because yeah. it's just too much even the the bootleg scene of of toys has spiked up in prices insanely i like that I, well, I like bootleg stuff. I think it's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's it, 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 it's funny and cool, but three years ago, you could have bought all of those for like a buck or two. Nothing. And now everybody has, you know, a full set of Master of the Universe toys. So now they want the bootlegs. They want the Skull Fours. They want the Turley Gangs. They want the Galaxy Warriors on card. And all those figures are like, you know, 40 to, yeah. to $100 on yeah. card now. Because they're even more scarce. They were produced with such bad quality plastic that none of them lasted. <laughs> All right, Ed. My my last question of the day. We're at, what, 20-some minutes right now. This is the last question. I need to know. Did the show, did you see the toys that made us? Yeah. Was that a good thing for the toy scene of a toy collector? who Of you who's been a toy collector for a long time. This is part of your life, part of your blood. I know there's been things about video games come out in the past where I'm like, that wasn't really accurate. I don't really like that. I feel like it did injustice to the toy, the, to the game hunting scene. Did the toys that made us do justice to you? Like were toy collectors like you saw yourself, you know, were you guys like, this is awesome and accurate. And we, we, we like this. Well, it was definitely accurate, but it was really general. So everything I already knew, Got which, it. which, which is actually, perfect for people trying to get into it because you get the basics of each toy line in there um it wasn't like the show the toy hunter where it was like oh this is a grill because this is a grill because and they show you a little backstory on each toy line this was like this is how the toy line started these are like the highlights and yeah that i, I like the show but it should have gone a bit deeper i do believe that um, Justice Curry, who's also a YouTuber, very 
huge vintage uh, toy collection he has. He has his own series on Amazon, okay. stuff like that, called pa- Plastic Crack, where he went over to collectors talking about the toys. It's really good produced, but it's more of an in-depth talk about how they collect and what the toy lines are, what the variations are, and everything right. like that. So, the toys that made us was more for, I guess, guys like me, more surface level. Surface yeah, level toy star- starters, you know, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good. Yeah, I always wondered that when I saw it. I'm like, oh, I love this. I liked it. But I was like, I don't know if toy collectors, you know, you go, it's like, I'll see something and I'm like, oh, this is great. And then you go into like a toy forum and they're like, this is garbage. I can't believe they did this. And they're, because they're the hardcores, you know. So I was just yeah. curious, but that's good to know. Uh, it was. I, I love to see it because it's so well produced, and it, it, if finally those toys are getting the attention they need yeah. to be recognized by by all, all 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 the people that played with them back in the day. Um, but you know, like there's channels out there like Pixel Dan, like Toy Galaxy, that already do a really great yeah. job. I like that. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's it's good. I I, uh, I liked how it was like it's almost like a YouTube show made its way onto Netflix because it had that YouTube feel, but not like that cheesy YouTube feel. It was like a, the fun YouTube feel that I personally like. So yeah. But yeah. It, it, it's, it's great that they got like the actual creators of the products in there. Yeah. And I saw Andre, uh, Andre, the black nerd, I think was on there. I think on yeah. one of them, power Rangers or something. I don't remember, but he was on one of them. He's a YouTube guy. So, um, all right, Ed, that's it. I am literally sweating right now because I did a six mile run right before we got on this. So don't, did, can you see any sweat coming off me, Ed? No, I'm okay. No, it's all good. It's all good. I'm, I'm drawn to like that, that Nintendo kiosk you picked up oh, wait. in one of the last episodes. Oh, Dude, it looks cool. freaking amazing. Yeah, it's <laughs> no, it's, can you tell what video game it's playing or is it too hard to see? Um, Aladdin? Bad dudes nope. versus Dragon Ninja. Bad dudes. Okay. I'm all right. Bad. But all right. Hey, Ed, everybody, or if you haven't seen Ed's Retro Geek Out, really go do. I've praised him and Retro Rick as kind of like the colorful, bright toy video game guys I like. But today, just go with Ed's Retro Geek Out because Rick's not here so we can talk trash on him. So check out Ed's. Oh, well, we should congratulate Rick. I mean, he got 8,000 subscribers. Um, today i think or yesterday he texted me that last night and i made him feel bad he texted me that and i'm like why bro is it all about subscribers to you or what i'm like don't you care more about the the comments and community he's like really why are you doing this i just give him a hard time i'm happy for him so but yeah that's it great job uh what am i saying great job to to me for doing this great job to you for being here but uh yeah thank you so much for having me on i've been a fan of your channel for, for the longest time that so your, that's your this is definitely thing. like the perfect fan servicing i'm getting right here oh, Stop <laughs> it. how much do you love the show <laughs> i'm just kidding but all right hey, i'm God. gonna hit i'm gonna hit stop recording bro and that's shut up <laughs> i'm gonna hit stop recording all right we're out of here all right. Bye.